What's going on, my friends? It's your boy Dave Sharp here in the house. I've got my main man Dennis here, queued up, teed up in the bullpen, coming up here in just a moment. Yes, we've got some male firepower here lined up for you this morning. Gotta love it. Um, my friends, let me remind you before we kick this show off this morning, each one of our guests are um, usually new uh, to our community. They've gone through our program, one, our 15-day challenge, our blueprints, or both. And, you know, we reached out to them through various ways in which we've been able to track their success and invited them on to share their story. I have no idea what they're going to say. Uh, I don't talk to people before the show. That's part of the magic. They could come on and tell me, Dave, you're, you know, you're, you're just the biggest jerk God ever created. Um, and I'd say, well, Hey, that's, that's nice. That's, that's a nice opinion. And I'd let them have the microphone for a few moments and then we'd probably move on. But, um, the point is, is that what you see is what you get here. And the point of this show is to give you all some perspective from other people who are new starting this journey, just like you, right. Uh, letting you hear all of their limiting beliefs and realizing that, People who are successful did not just magically become successful, but they've had a lot of the same um, challenges, struggles, limiting beliefs, mindset issues, technical challenges that you've had, and they persevered through and realized they could do hard things. And my message to you this morning is you can also do hard things, my friend. You can do hard things as well. So with that being said, please help me welcome to the legendary virtual stage here on Wake Up Legendary. Dennis, what's up, my brother? What's up, man? How you doing? All right, all right, all right. Uh, you know, d the old the old, uh, the old, old boxing intro, let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> There's just two guys on a couple of web ca webcams like, hey, what's up? Good morning. <laughs> you know what I mean? This, this whole thing's new to me, man. I'm, I've never been a webcam guy. Well, that can be good for a lot of reasons, especially if you're a married man. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Hey, that's my dad joke of the day. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, dude, you're a truck driver. Is that right? Another blue collar bro yeah. here in the house? Yeah, I drive a flatbed full of steel every day. Full steel. Did you did you say full steel? Full, steel. full of steel. A steel flatbed. Full of steel. I love yeah. it. I love it. So that's a heavy sucker, huh? Yeah, 40,000 pounds. I drive probably about three hours away, three days a week. Three hours, do 10, 12 stops, drive three hours back. So that's something. Crap. What are you transporting? You're transporting literally steel on the back yeah, of the truck? Yeah, big massive steel bars, copper, bronze, uh, big sheet pallets. So, and I live in Buffalo, New York. So in the wintertime, it gets dicey with 40,000 pounds driving in a blizzard. Oh, nice, dude. Nice, yeah. though, bro. I mean, that's see why I would get into affiliate marketing. I can't. I can't understand why you would want to put you know <laughs> try to this in your career. You know, I just yeah. can't even put that at all. Um, heading out on the road with a forty thousand pound steel missile every day. Uh, pretty on much icy, on icy roads. No, no, yep. no, no less. So. Bro, welcome to Legendary. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you. And as you know, I'm a blue collar boy as well down here in the opposite climate, hot Florida yeah. sun, swinging a hammer, running a jackhammer, uh, ripping out bathrooms and kitchens and tile floors and um, all, all that I've, stuff. And I've done it all right there with you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, I, I get it. And I also wanted out and this happened to be the way that I found to, um, yeah, just start making a few dollars. Then it turned into a few more Then it turned into a, like a kind of a, a, a profitable hobby. And then it turned into somewhere along the way, an actual career. And it's given me a life beyond my wildest dreams. And, uh, so I'm, I'm happy for you that you've got the entrepreneurial bug. Tell us how you found us. I mean, what were you looking for? Do you, do you feel like this is it? Do you feel like this is um, what you what you need or what you want at this point in your life? Tell us how you got here. Yeah, I, uh, I mean, obviously, like everybody else, times have been tough. You know, I'm making making good enough money to survive in the landscape we were living in. And then obviously things kind of flipped on everyone. 
so I was looking for side work. And like I said, I've, I've been carpenter for a lot of years with my father painting, doing siding, just any, everything you've done construction. And I, uh, my wife one day, she's been following someone on Instagram for years and he's doing the affiliate marketing thing. And she knew I was kind of down in the dumps trying to figure out where to go next. And I'm almost 40 years old. So, I mean, the whole manual labor thing's getting taxing. And obviously I know what I'm doing, but you're going to break down eventually. I got two small boys. I don't want to break down and not be able to enjoy them in my life. Yeah. So she put me on to him and I went in and I joined the program the same night and dove right in. Um, my mentor even said, I can't wait to see you on wake up legendary in six months. And it's been almost seven months, but pretty, pretty close. She, she called it. <laughs> and yeah, it's just, I am just sick of the just pounding coming home on Friday, already dreading going back to work on Monday. And I mean, this is definitely not something I saw myself doing, but I figured if I'm going to be sitting on my phone, scrolling the internet, I'd rather not waste my time. I'd rather utilize it. Yeah. So. Wow. Well, I, I mean, I think your, I think your TikTok handle says it all. Dennis, the exhausted dad, <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I mean, I like that, 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 that's, that's funny. It's humorous. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a cool name and it's relatable, right? Because mm -hmm. before we get into you relating to others in your marketing, you're, you're, you are exhausted, right? It's an honest statement. Your pain is coming from the fact that, um, you're, there's not enough month at the end of the money or money at the end of the month. And, um, you know, despite working your ASS off, you're, you're not getting ahead. Am I right? No, it's ex exact opposite. Just keep getting further behind and no idea how, when you're working so hard, Right. it's, it's a tough, tough landscape to traverse. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I love the comment also about if I'm going to be on my phone anyways, why not make money? Um, so what was what was it like for you to come into our challenge? I see you've kind of gone all in too with like investing in yourself. Um, you're, you're a 15 day challenge student. You're also inside of our blueprints. What was that like for you to kind of go back to school at, in this in this different way, in this in this online way? Um, how did you get humble? How did you swallow your pride? I mean, how did you, I mean, obviously it sounds like you're beat down enough and, and when us guys get beat down enough, we, we tend to, we tend to be open for some help. Whereas, you yeah. know, we feel, if we don't feel enough pain, we can be too prideful to open up. And that's, I'm speaking for myself anyways. What, yeah. what's, what's that been like for you to go through and be new here and kind of be a student and kind of be like, Hey, my best thinking got me here, or at least the instruction and guidance that I've gotten from other mentors, teachers in the system sort of failed me. W what's this whole experience been like when you, when you essentially came in starting from zero and how did you, how have you swallowed your pride and been new and, 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 and got, get gotten into a learner's mindset? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I've I've never been a, you know, I, I'm an outgoing guy, but I've never been one to really jump into stuff like this and kind of it was kind of it's terrifying at first, honestly. But I knew it was at a point where it's either this or you're going to go get a second job and lose all that time with your family. And mm. I decided, even if it's not going to make me a millionaire overnight, or I'm not going to make boatloads of money right away. It's going to work eventually. And I think a lot of people come into stuff like this thinking it's a scam or whatever, but it's, it's all what you put in. I mean, you're, I'm not here to make anybody else money, but myself. And like I said, I think that's a lot of people online that'll make nasty comments on your posts or something. Say you're a scam artist. They, they don't realize it because they're not in it. They're just, they're jealous if anything, because they don't have the wherewithal to start themselves. And it's, I think the, the whole point of this is just making sure you stay consistent. And I've never really been consistent with stuff like that. I mean, 
jobs. I've jumped job to job to job. And yeah. even even in the manual labor side of things, it was just, oh, I don't like this job. Let's move on to the next one. Oh, this isn't working for me. Let's move on to the next one. Mm. And I'm, I'm about to be 39 years old, and that just doesn't work anymore. So it's, uh, I've, I've gone through some tough times with this. Like, obviously, you see people making money like that, and you're not. And it can, it's the whole limiting belief side of things like, Oh, why am I not making this money when everybody else is, but you're not everybody else. You're you. And you just put in the work and stay consistent. It will work. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to half invest in myself. I'm, I'm going all into it. Yeah. I, in that awareness that you have about your past, um, shortcomings or where you have failed yourself in the past are the are the most powerful re realizations that you or anybody else listening to this can have it's not about when when we come in we have such a tendency because this is kind of what we're trained to do to look at everybody well why is everybody having so much success and i'm not and the truth is you don't really know if they're having that much success or not you don't really know because you're not sitting at their computer, looking at their bank account, living their life. Um, they, they could be, um, they could have been doing this somehow, some way for 10 years. I know a lot of people have done MLM before this drop shipping, other different kind of businesses to where they've at least, they've at least kind of trained their brain to be an entrepreneur. You know, they've overcome a lot of their limiting beliefs and you hit, you see the glory, but you don't know the story. And so yeah. we tend to compare ourselves um, real quickly with people. And, and, and so that, that, that tends to be a pitfall. The other big pitfall is exactly what you pointed out in having that awareness about how you had not followed through with other things in the past. A lot of times we just don't recognize our negative patterns. We just don't yeah. recognize where where we have shot ourselves in the foot in the past so we can avoid doing that now. And you just nailed it. In the past, I've done various things, whether it was a job or whether it was a, a, a business venture. I didn't follow through with those things. I, qu I quit before the miracle happened. That's what I mean by that. I quit before I started gaining momentum. I quit before I built my confidence. I quit before I started seeing results. And then I jumped to the next thing. That got hard. I ran it. I was new. I had to be new at it. You know, I started from the bottom and that was uncomfortable. So I jumped to the next thing. And now seeing that I think age helps because you get older and you're like, I can't keep doing this. You know, like I have to plant my flag somewhere. It's kind of like relationships. Like if I jump from relationship to relationship, relationship, I'm 40 years old and I've been divorced a few times. I need to plant my flag and say, take a look in the mirror and say, what part am I playing in this, right? What part mm -hmm. do I play in creating this, these dynamics in my life? And, and that can be a difficult road to navigate the same way that business can. So you realize that you weren't consistent, that you quit too early. What other limiting beliefs are you starting to see and gain awareness about that have come up in this journey that you're determined to not let stop you again? I mean, obviously money plays a huge factor in everything we do. So like when I first started this, you had your millionaire mindset audio. I listened to it seven times a day, every single day for months and months and months. It was the most important part of my morning, four o'clock in the morning, getting my truck. I turned it right on the second I started driving. Get the hell out of here. Every day, every wow. single day. Whenever I'd start feeling down, like, oh, this isn't going to work for me, I'd throw it on 30 minutes. And you're driving for six straight hours. Right. So I, that's how I watched 300 Wake Up Legendaries just day after day after day after day. And it's... I mean, this can be a very powerful show. I know, I know you guys want, that's what you want it to be and people can stray away from it. And when you do have those limiting beliefs, just know you're not alone. Everyone has them. I don't care if somebody's coming on Instagram saying I have, I made $7 million this year. They've had limiting beliefs. They've been scared and terrified of what's coming in the future. And I mean, we're all there. It's, 
not easy going through this. You never know what's going to happen. But I mean, you said with relationships and everything and divorce, like I grew up watching my whole family go through all of that. And it's tough to make yourself successful when you see the people around them, around you sabotaging their life. Uh, both my brothers went through divorces young and I'm just, I want my kids to have a stable life. I want them to see that their dad can do this and I'm not going to give up on it. I said, since I've had my children, I've, that's my first son's six years old now. That's right. When he was born is when I started shifting my mindset. I got my CDL. I've had three different jobs, but it's more get experience, move up, get experience, move up. And then now I'm looking at it and it's, I'm either moving up to lose time with them or I'm going to do this and do whatever I want, mm -hmm. go where I want. No, I mean, we, uh, my wife's a stay at home mom. Right. When we had our kid, I said, uh, said, I'm not making you go to work. I want, I want my wife to raise my children. I don't want someone else raising my kids. Now we homeschool them. So I want to be able to just pick up and go, go on a vacation. Yeah. Say, oh, how, how's your kid going to go to school? Oh, we teach him. I'm, I'm going to mold my child. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I love it a lot. I, I'm just struck by the fact that you said that you were listening to Millionaire Mindset seven times a day. By the way, Millionaire Mindset is a blueprints bonus. And if you go in your back office under the blueprints, uh, you, you open up your products, okay? Um, you will see it right on the Business Blueprint Start Here page. You just scroll down. It is the number four item, getting started item on that Blueprints Start Here page. For those of you who are wondering where it is, it is a... It is an audio that we have engineered together through various clips and trainings that I've done over the 13 year career that I have. Uh, and we've we've put it together in such a way that uh, we, we believe that if listened to um, can begin to help you shift and rewire your thinking around money and thinking around success. And Wake Up Legendary is an addition to that. We can never get enough brain training. Um, so many people want marketing training. But the problem with marketing training is, is that if you um, buy a new piece of hardware, meaning that if you get a new computer, but it's running on the same software, you really don't have a new computer, do you? You have a new piece of you have a new shell, which is what we often do. We buy new shells. We buy new clothes. We buy new um, Gucci belts. We buy a new pair of shoes. We go on Amazon. Sometimes we get, we get a haircut. We think that we change our appearance. We always are changing our shell. We're, we're upgrading our iPhone, right? metaphorically speaking, but if we're running on the same software and that's a great analogy, you, you can upgrade your phone, but if you don't upgrade the software that actually powers the phone is all you have is a, is a new, is a new piece of metal. And so our brains and bodies work the same way. We, 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 you know, we buy a new program, we start something new, we get excited about something that's an external thing. We think that that external thing, that new guru, that new program, that new marketing strategy is going to change everything for us. It can help. Certainly it can help. But if we don't upgrade and update the software that is powering the entire thing, then we're always going to have a tendency to fall back into old patterns and old ways. And uh, this is so obvious in human nature, right? I mean... <laughs> problem with being a, an, an addict like me is that everywhere I go, there I am. So I've met a lot of addicts who are in recovery who don't work on upgrading their software and doing real recovery work, meaning tracing back roots of why behaviors are the way that they are, going back and doing family history work, going back and doing uh, trauma work, wh where, why, 
what am I hurting? What am I afraid of? Where did this stuff come from? Is it, is it coming from previous generations and it's being passed along to me? So instead, they just make a geographical change. I'm going to move out of the neighborhood. Well, the problem is the neighborhood wasn't the problem. <laughs> the neighborhood wasn't the problem because you can find drugs and alcohol. There's a bar and a 7-Eleven on every damn corner in America, right? Yeah, so if I, yeah I take my software with me. Right. I just I just I'm like, okay, I'm going to move my software, my old, outdated, dysfunctional software from this 7-Eleven, this neighborhood that has a 7-Eleven over here to this neighborhood that has this different 7-Eleven. But guess what? I can walk in. I can belly up to any bar in America. And if I haven't changed and upgraded my software and realized that, oh, I'm drinking to medicate that pain from not having a father. I'm, tr I'm drinking, I'm drugging to medicate that pain of being abused. I'm, I'm medicating because I have shame about my family history and how I grew up, right? Whatever it is, right? You know, oh shit, I'm actually an addict. I've got an addictive personality combined with that trauma. Oh crap. You can do that work in the middle of a drug infested neighborhood and stay clean. Cause I've seen it happen before. If you upgrade that software, Right. I, I know plenty of addicts who get clean and never move neighborhoods and actually instead, because they upgraded the software. Now, all of a sudden they become a beacon of hope and inspiration for others in that area. Right. That's one of the most powerful things of of changing oneself. So anyways, I'm ranting about it. But your 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 awareness, brother, is like inspirational in your dedication to listening and learning. You must realize this stuff actually works and helps and that we aren't just doing this for pure entertainment purposes yeah. only. And I'm not doing this just to make money. I mean, like that millionaire mindset tells you, you have to change your mind before you can change your life. Your life's not going to change if you stay stuck in the same rut in your head. I mean, you can tell yourself all you want. I'm going to be a millionaire. It's not going to happen if you don't change certain aspects of your life. Mm. And like I said, I was always just, laser focus that my only purpose and my only value in life was to work with my hands. And I mean, I grew up, my father was in the military for 30 years. So, I mean, he was a painter and we struggled. And I mean, we were, we were homeless when I was a uh, preteen, like 12, 13 years old, we were living in his car and people's basements and sleeping on cots, me, my father, and my, my brother. And, I, most people would look at that and have the whole woe is me mentality. Like, oh, I had to go through that. I looked at it and said, I got to go through that because that's going to drive me to make sure my kids don't ever have to go through that. Mm -hmm. And those are some of the things that when I do have limiting beliefs, I tell myself, well, you're not in that position and you're strong enough to make sure you're never going to be. A lot of our situations break us before they make us. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. It's okay to be broken and feel broken because life is hard. What you just described was an unbelievably difficult childhood that probably created a lot of shame and probably created a lot of hurt and a lot of pain in your life for a significant period of time until you made a decision that, ooh, I feel broken and I never want to make my kids feel broken like this. And I don't want to feel broken like this anymore. And so for those of you who are coming in feeling broken right now, feeling like, hey, you know what, it's, it's great that others can succeed, but um, this, this is not going to work out for me because I'm too broken. I'm too old. I'm too this. I'm too that. Well, you have to be broken before you get <laughs> woken, if, put, if you put will. Put yourself back together. You can't put yourself back together if you're not broken. That's right. That's right. Just like you can't put a bunch of knowledge into a full cup. That's why they say come to the, you know, come to the well with an empty cup, man, yep. because it, otherwise you're just And the worst thing is to be broken and prideful. <laughs> that's yeah. the worst. Yeah. Well, that's like I said, that's, that's where I've been. Yeah. And this, this is honestly, I came into it with a hole in the bottom of the cup and I'm trying to rebuild that. For sure. And, and I've been there too. And I, I meet guys all the time, man. And I see them and women, you don't get it out on this either. Life can just be a total wreck. I mean, credit card debt up to the your eyebrows. 
you know, not enough, not enough money at the end of the month. The money runs out halfway through the month, right? You're deciding whether you're going to, you know, whether you're going to pay the electric bill or whether you're going to buy groceries and, and just putting it all on credit cards. Um, you, you know, you, you're working at a job that you hate, a boss that you hate. You're not spending any time with your kids. The relationship sucks. You're not getting what you want out of the relationship, but you are so prideful. And these are oftentimes the people who are being bashing about things that they see on the internet. They're so miserable and prideful that they couldn't possibly have an opening in their mind that their best thinking got them exactly where they're at. They've not embraced their broken so they can they 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 so they can get awoken, <laughs> right? If that's, they just, if that's a word, they just feel like they, they got to suck everybody into their hole so they're not alone. Exactly, exactly. Misery loves company, crabs in a bucket. You see other people that are trying to cr crawl out of the bucket and it's like, no, get your ass back down here. Yeah. And so the brokenness, man, is the most important part to embrace. The brokenness is where all your power comes from. Not because you're broke and that it's because you cannot you cannot move forward until you until you embrace and acknowledge that I can't do this alone. I need, I need help. I need help. My best thinking got me here. I'm in, I'm in quicksand doing this alone. Now, some yeah. people, this can turn into a spiritual message as well, right? Because I mean, oftentimes we learn that, look, God doesn't really help until man says, uncle right like they're, ta I, they're tapping out yep you know what I'm like i need you right because we have self-will but it, just in the sense of just in in business in marketing in in learning a new craft and learning a new skill and going back to school here in this weird way online if if you know it all man then who can help you and if you know no, it all who wants to help you yeah and, Nobody likes the know-it-all guy or the gal that's too prideful. And what's what's embarrassing is that when my life is clearly broken and I'm still so prideful, it's also painful. It's also one of the most painful experiences to be struggling deeply and not able to ask anybody for help and get humble. And that's why I asked you at the beginning and I ask a lot of people, like, how did you get humble? How are you embracing being new? Because that's really, as I'm sure you're realizing, it's really a strength to be able to be new at something. Whereas maybe in the past, other men have showed you like they showed me that we don't show any weakness and we ain't new at nothing. We know exactly what we're doing, right? Mm -hmm. That's on my TikTok. That's, like I said, I geared it towards like working class, blue collar dads. And I see a lot of that. I've had guys comment. I've had people that I don't even know send me direct messages saying, you know, your, your message saved me today. I'm like, wow, I didn't know it was that powerful, but men won't share that. Like I said, he wouldn't say that in a comment. He sent it to me directly. And it's, it's, it sucks because men won't get help. They'll just sit there and just keep struggling and struggling. And when you say, Hey, I have a way to help you out. No, I, that, that's not for me. I know what I'm doing. Well, you men obviously don't. don't. Get, men don't get help because men don't get humble. Yeah. That's why men don't get help. We're not victims. You know, there's this kind of, there's a little bit of a narrative that goes around on social media right now and that you see people talking about that men, you know, somehow get left out of the conversation and as if we're victims, like, men, like nobody, nobody checks on men, right? All this kind of shit. Look, ain't nobody coming to check on women either. No. But women have more of an ability to be able to get humble than men do. Women have more of an ability to be able to kind of like talk about their problems with other women. They have more of an ability to be able to share their feelings. But men, we don't have feelings. <laughs> We're all we gladiators. We're all gladiators, <laughs> right? We're all, we're all, we, so men don't get help because men don't get humble. Men are not victims, fellas. We're not victims of any damn thing. The only time and, we want to be victims is when, you know, when, when, you know, 
when when you know we really really want something we go to the the the, the ladies and we say oh, poor, poor me right but the yeah, truth oh of the matter God. is is if we were acting like a man they'd be more attracted to us in the first place men are not victims men are not victims we are in the we are we we struggle to get help because we can't get humble and when we get humble which a lot of times comes from humiliation unfortunately with men it comes from humiliation and we have a choice. This is what I've learned is that I can either choose to get humble or choose not to get humble and be humiliated. Mm -hmm. And what humiliated often ends up looking like is what I just listed. I'm broke. I, my, you know, the wife and I, or whatever, my, my partner, we're constantly talking about money. We're constantly fighting and bickering. I'm working for somebody that I hate. I'm, I'm having to go and do things that I'm not able to be around my kids. To me, that's humiliating for me to have to go and take orders from somebody that I hate and don't respect. That's humiliating to me. Not yeah. be, having to drop my kids off to somebody else, in your case, if you had to drop your kids off to somebody else, you really want to homeschool them and have somebody else raise them. That's humiliating to me. It's not humiliating if I want that, but if I don't want that and I'm forced to do it because mm -hmm. I can't provide my for my own family and my own children, that's humiliating. So, men, we have to get humble, man. We have to embrace being new at something because we're not victims. And we need to learn something from women. Not that we need to be all feelings and, you know, be sitting around holding hands, singing Kumbaya and, and sharing our feelings because men really work better when we talk about what we're thinking. Right. And then eventually we can maybe sort through some of the feelings, but the most important thing for a man to do is to get humble and get very comfortable with humility, which is, which is actually not a weakness. It's a strength because once we get humble, we're no longer in competition with everybody else around us, particularly other men. We now uh, are in collaboration with them. We can learn from them. We can, we can embrace, we can eat the meat and leave the bones. That's what I sense has happened with you, brother, is that you have embraced the humble enough to where I mean, you're listening to another man and look, I mean, you could very well have pulled up on me and said, who's this dick? Who's this loud mouth? I ain't listening to him. What's he know? But here you are listening to dadgum millionaire mindset and watching 300 episodes of wake up legendary. If that ain't humble. Yeah. I don't, I and don't know what is. I feel like the biggest problem with men, a lot of us, we instead of getting humble, we turn to drugs and alcohol, and we let we medicate ourselves to try and deal with the situation. I'm, I I won't lie, I've I've been there myself. Wow. My my father my father died a couple of years ago. He had a traumatic brain injury, and it was just out of nowhere. It just fell, hit his head, and I never talked to him again. And for about a year after that, right before, up until about right before I started doing this, I was drinking three four days a week and. I would use it to escape my reality and I was doing drugs and I finally, I looked at my children. I said, is this the kind of man I want my kids to emulate and grow up to grow up seeing? And I just, I stopped it all immediately. Mm. I haven't touched anything about seven, eight months now since I started doing this. And, but not a lot of men have, have the power, the brain power to do that. And that's where I, like I say, you have to change your mind before you can change your life. Sobriety no. is a superpower for me, man. I mean, because yeah. when I'm drunk and I'm drugged up, I, I'm making stupid decisions. I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm not, I'm not motivated. I'm dizzy. I'm lazy. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. hungover, and I've got no clarity about my life. I also feel inadequate and insecure. And the the thing about the thing about getting humble as a man is I need, I, in order for me to get humble, I, I need to feel self-esteem. I need to feel self-worth. I need to be okay enough with myself that I can get humble and ask for help. And when I'm intoxicated, 
that is it, when I am in, and I haven't been intoxicated for a very long time. I've been in recovery for 15 years. But when I used to be re- intoxicated, I was the most egotistical, unbelievable. Nobody could tell me anything. Right. Because it just brought out all of the ego and all of the insecurity that was in, within me. And so now um, all my success, I attribute to my sobriety. I didn't used to really understand how big of a role that played in my life, but all of my success, I attribute to my sobriety. And I, you know, people come to the masterminds and I'm now, we just had two um, events back to back, one for our clients. And then our team came into Orlando as well. We even had two kick-ass parties, man, to where we partied all into the night. Sure. There was an open bar and for some people they can have a drink and it doesn't turn into what we're talking about. Um, but I was, you know, I'm completely sober, hanging out with a sparkling water, dancing my ass off, having a great yeah. time because I've actually now learned how to have not only do work and be serious sober, but also to have fun and to party sober and enjoy the fact that I can get up the next morning and not have a hangover. Um, so good for you, bro. I mean, that's such a big deal. Sobriety is going to become your superpower. And I love that you're modeling this for your kids because you're absolutely right. My father grew up watching his parents um, drink. He grew up in a violent, alcoholic environment. Um, a lot of drama and unbelievable trauma came from that. Then he became alcoholic. Then I grew up watching him drink. I remember getting into the car with my father and I remember him having a tall boy in a brown paper bag between his legs more than I remember him putting on his seatbelt. And that's what I grew up watching. And so then I became alcoholic as well and drug addict. And well, I got sober in 2008. And after I was living with my dad at that time, now this doesn't always happen the way that it happened in our family, but my father was around me for six months sober. We were still living in the same house because he was helping me get back on my feet and he was inspired to get sober. He made an ass of himself one night. Uh, and the next day I came and I said, something's different about you, but we, we had, we had gotten to an argument. So I wasn't really that curious. And then two days, three days, went by, I said, what in the hell? He said, I hadn't had a drink in three days. And now he hasn't had a drink in 15 years. He's been sober as well. And so we're doing a little bit of reverse work on how, you know, how you can not only impact with your one choice and then follow through, impact your children and change the entire future of you. You want to talk about the impact on children, brother, that you're having with school and stuff like that. that. That single piece about sobriety, will have an impact into the future generations. But in my case, it also had an impact on past generations, which is was really cool to see. I love that for you, man. Really do. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't bring them around any of that stuff. Like I said, my, my mother's family, I, I haven't really talked to my mother in years because they're all damaging. I see they're all still, they're all following the same trends. Yeah, they're all alcoholics and smoking in rooms with children, and not not bringing my kids around any of that. They're all, and it's crazy too. Like they see everybody's dying of lung cancer around them, so let's smoke more. And then they put their kids in a room with it, and I just they they hate me because I don't bring my kids around. But that's boundaries, I mean, great boundaries, brother. I mean, I am not let it. not letting them experience any of it. And I'm, you can call me an a-hole. You can call me whatever you want, but my kids are going to grow up not knowing that life. Yeah. Good for you. That's wonderful boundaries. Talk to us about what other boundaries are you setting around this business in terms of, you know, how, how have you communicated with your, with your spouse? How have you, how have you communicated or not communicated with friends in terms of explaining yourself or seeking validation from people who don't understand? They say when you explain a big dream to a small minded person, you're the one who walks away frustrated. So how have you set up your own boundaries that have protected your dream that you've got clarity on that you're following through on right now and not going around 
putting it in other people's hands to poo poo on? And how also are you maybe saying no to things that you may not have used to say no to? Just talk to us about how you're protecting this business and this new dream that you have, both in, in a compassionate way, I'm sure, in your home with your spouse, but also maybe in more of an asshole way which sometimes you got to be an asshole to protect a dream with people who are outside of your house. Yeah. I've kind of, I've, I've geared lately more towards the asshole side of things. <laughs> when I first started doing it, I mean, I was, I was gung ho about it, you know, excited. And I was telling all my family members and they were giving me the, yeah, okay, whatever. Everybody, everybody has their little scheme. They cook up in their mind that they're going to be a millionaire. And now I just, I, I don't, go into that well I'm I put my head down I'm moving forward um every time I mean if I'm on Instagram I put a video up and it gets 27 views I say okay what did I do wrong what do I have to do to make it better next time and it's gradually getting better and better and I've started kind of cutting the fat if you will any family members friends or anything that are on those pages I tell them you know why don't you just unfollow me I don't I don't want to get into fights with you about what I'm doing with my life because in the long run, you don't pay my bills and your beliefs aren't going to crush my dreams. Mm. Like I'm not going to ruin my life because you don't think it's a good idea. Like I'm going to keep pushing, keep striving for excellence rather than looking at you and saying, am I doing okay? Is this a good idea? I don't care what you think. And I mean, that's probably a good thing about me. I really don't give a shit what anybody thinks. I'm going to do what I'm going to do. And most of the time I would have quit by now. Honestly, this is something five, 10 years ago. I would have quit. I would have quit after a couple months when I didn't start seeing results immediately. But now I'm kind of putting it in my mind. I see these people online making millions and they might not be, they might be, I don't know, but I'm going to watch you and I'm going to do the things well that you do well and try to do them in my own way and that's I feel like that's a big problem with a lot of people getting into this stuff they want to go and do exactly what someone else does i mean you can look at what they're doing but just put your own spin on it yeah like like i said with the the tiktok thing my uh the guy who i've been working with on it he said you know try and show yourself. And I said, I, you know, I want to put my kids into it. I think my, putting my kids in, but I don't want to have them talking. I don't really want you to see them too well. So he taught me copywriting. He showed me that copywriting is very important when it comes to doing these videos, especially if you don't want to talk. And so I've been working on my copywriting and getting and kind of honing in and fine tuning it. And obviously I'm not perfect. Nobody's ever going to be perfect at anything, but if you're not willing to put in the time and the work, it's not going to get better. And that's with anything. I said, if you don't want to do marketing and you want to go swing a hammer, you're not going to get good at it unless you work at it. Yeah. So yeah. The, nothing's ever going to come to you unless you're a trust fund baby. Nothing's ever going to just come to you. Here you go. Here's a million dollars. No, you're going to have to work for it. Yeah. Someone like me is a prime example. You're never going to have something handed to you. You've got to, you got to fight and embrace the suck, if you will. Like they say in the military, so embrace the suck, man. Yeah. And and I I I I have I don't know what it's like to have something handed to me either. I I um I know what it's now like to give to bless other people, but I I in terms of mon monetary blessings, I I've gotten none. Um, uh, I grew up blue collar. I grew up with parents that were working, that were still, um, o overcoming, you know, and, and again, we've got a lot more resources today than, than we had then, uh, back then. So I, I don't hold anything against my parents. As a matter of fact, what I, I try to do everything that I can to help my parents now today from housing to cars, to whatever I can do in order to help them to feel more comfortable because, it's just the way that it is. And that makes me feel good. And that's one of the reasons why I do what I do. I want to go back to the asshole thing again, because I don't hear us talking enough on the show and in our community enough about being an asshole. And let me explain what I mean by that. We're too nice, folks. We're too nice to people. 
we're too nice to the people who are poo-pooing on our dreams and our goals and our aspirations. It's kind of like one of the things that I learned in recovery around staying clean, that if somebody is offering me to get high for free to come hang out and I'm trying to stay clean, I don't go, you know what, let me, I'll call you late. Let, Hold on. What's your number? Let me call you. I'm, I got to go right now, but let me call or let me text you my number. And I say, no, thanks. Don't do that. Got to go. No, I'm not there to be nice. I'm, I got to stop being nice to people who don't have my best interest in mind. I got to stop thinking that I owe everybody an explanation. I don't owe anybody anything. I don't owe, I don't owe, I damn sure don't owe some stranger on the internet once I start marketing and creating content an explanation about what I'm doing, why it's not what they think it is, this, that. I don't owe anybody anything. My parents, if you are a person that is over the age of 18, that's where I am, man. They all, my, everybody says, Yep, you owe your mom. I don't owe her shit, man. I didn't ask to be here. I'm making the best of the situation. That's right. That's right. And in and, and family and friends and all the, the only person that you owe an explanation to is somebody if you are in a committed relationship with them and you've agreed that you're going to share life and your damn children, particularly <laughs> if your children are under the age of 18, if they... Now, I'm going to say something real controversial here. If your kids are over the age of 18 and they're adults, you don't owe them an explanation either. Yeah, I said it. Yep. Yeah, I said it. Because they're I adult. am that person. I am an adult child. And, 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 and if, I, if my father or my mother wanted to start something or were pursuing something and I came in like a jerk and I was criticizing them, they have every right to tell me to screw off. Get out of here, Dave. I don't owe you anything. Hang the phone up. Learn how to ignore calls. Learn how to say no. Learn how to not respond to text messages. Learn how to, you know, that when somebody calls, there's green or red. I call red sometimes the FU button. Hit the FU button. Treat people like a damn spam call. Because if you you answer that call, you got to get into it. There's no turning back. You asked for it. Sometimes, and I this was a Drake lyric that I heard on one of his previous albums. Sometimes a wise man says nothing at all. Mm-hmm. And I've learned that my one of my greatest superpowers, and this is why you do not see me drumming up controversy on the internet, getting into fights and arguments, debating people. Dude, my energy is so valuable. I'm talking $100,000 an hour valuable, man. My, if, if you, in in order for me to say somebody's name, you got to pay me, man. Some, some hater is not going to be Dave, this legendary, that, and then I'm going to get on a video and, and, and say their name. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't Beyonce. This ain't destiny's child. This ain't say my name, (laughs) say my name. You know what I mean? I'm, that's not who I am. So just erase it and move on, man. I've had, I've already had people, Oh, this is a pyramid scheme. You're a scammer. I don't say how, how am I a scam? I delete block. See you later. Fuck off. Sorry. Apologize. That's my mentality now though. Well, we're we're get we're hot. We're coming in hot today. So I mean, yeah. it's, it's it's all good because you know if you if you're offended by that language, my friends, you better check the door yeah. and remember what <laughs> drove you in here in the first place. That's what they used to say to me and rec- not to me because I never cared. I always loved when people dropped bombs. But you know, if somebody was offended by language. Uh, especially in like a, a, a recovery room. Oh, this person costs us too much. It's like, well, you better remember what the hell ran you in here and got you sitting yeah. in this room in the first place and tell me if my language is more offensive or your old reality was more offensive, yeah. right? Sometimes we need to, again, stop explaining and stop getting so offended. Stop explaining and stop getting so offended. And so let's talk a little bit about you're, you were alluding to some of your marketing here a minute ago, and talk. Time's flying. Talk to us a little bit about how you have embraced getting on video 
and what are some tips that you have about content creation from when when you sucked worse and you may still suck that's okay i hope you do because i some days i feel like i suck too and that keeps me humble but what have you done that is working and what are you loving about TikTok, maybe over Instagram? Just give us a couple of bullet points about your marketing that you feel is some helpful takeaways that you've had over the course of the last couple of months. Oh, I see a lot of people saying they're afraid to start. That's the whole be an asshole. Don't, don't give a shit. Just do it. And I was kind of like that from the beginning with the videos. Like I, I was talking to my mentor. I was like, when do I start making these videos? She said, you can start as early as you want. So I just went on and started doing it. And they sucked at first. They were terrible. My first video on TikTok was me in a hard hat going going out to my steel truck, just talking to people. And then, like I said, my the mentor I've been working with, he started tweaking it and I stopped talking in them. Then I started incorporating my children and it's a step-by-step -step process. Nothing's going to be perfect overnight. Like you have to find what works for you. When I see videos getting 12 views, I don't just keep making the same crap. I tweak it, I change it. And I mean, definition of insanity over here, you do the same thing over and over looking for a different result. You're just going to drive yourself insane. <laughs> So Instagram's definitely been a little tougher, obviously, because they they want they want more wholesome content. TikTok, I could I could go throw a fish at a wall and people, oh hey, that's cool, like like like. But uh, yeah, in Instagram's tougher, <laughs> but that's Instagram's where you're going to get the real engagement. TikTok is going to get you out there. That's how I feel. At least TikTok has gotten me out there. I have what twenty, almost twenty five hundred followers now. But I also had to go and follow a bunch of people and kind of get the train moving. Instagram's been all organic. I mean, I started the Instagram back in July, I think, and I've just been. I've had some moments where I was like, "Is this even worth it?" But then I listened to your millionaire mindset, and it gets the wheels moving again. So okay, well, stop limiting your beliefs. Stop limit. You limit yourself. It, you get inside your head, you're dead. That's the biggest thing. I every time I have a limiting belief, I say that to myself. And you have changed my life, honestly, just with that little thirty minute clip. It it's changed everything for me because I've been a limiting belief guy my whole life, and I don't want to be that. And when you're when you're on social media, don't limit yourself. If you feel like you look like a fool, look like a damn fool. If you don't feel like your voice is coming across the way you want it to cut the sound and learn how to copyright and put some copyright over it. Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of different things. You can cap cut. You can, I don't know how to do any of this crap. Yeah. I came in like, what the hell is a cap cut? How do I edit videos? You just, you figure it out. You don't have to go into your first video. Oh, I have to do this. Perfect. No, get it out there. On the next one, when you, if people go in your comments and say, you look like an idiot. Okay, what do I do different to not look like an idiot? And you, fix it. <laughs> you roll forward. That's that humility, brother, that I was yeah. talking about earlier. Right. It's not – we don't let comments run us back into our cave. We, we absorb them, take the meat, leave the bones. Maybe the negative comments have some truth to them. I mean, if somebody it says, oh, you look like an asshole, you look like an idiot – Hey, maybe I do. I mean, but that, maybe that's the breaking maybe, you downside so you can build yourself up. Maybe me looking like an idiot was also what got you commenting. So, I mean, in some yeah. respects, I see a lot of people with, I mean, I'm watching this. I was watching this one guy. I don't know if you've ever seen him. He's the, he's the young cat. His name is Waxen. I think his name's Jackson, but he's the dude who's always like, Hey, my outfit is so fly, man. I'm just so much drip. And he's like a 16 year old kid, but he's so cringe. It is so cringe. And he's always talking about how much drip he's got. And I mean, clearly he is a nerdy dude, but that looking people like people are million, watching him, bro. Millions. Yeah. Millions. I mean, Howard, Howard Stern had more people that hated him listening and watching his show than yeah. didn't. They said, well, how do you feel that people hate you or watching your show? I said, they're watching my show, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's all that matters. Rush Limbaugh too. He yeah. had more people that hated him watch listening to his show. And when asked, so, I mean, how do you feel that he's like, I got him listening. Don't I, Yeah. I don't care who's listening. As long as you're listening, as long as I'm getting my vision across to people. Yeah. 
So what, as we bring this in for a landing, this is, this time has flown by, I'm having a blast. What have you, what have you, um, what has this process taught you about yourself, man? I mean, what have you learned about Dennis that you either forgot or did not know you were capable of or what life lesson, like, what is this just, what is this, what has been one of the, uh, you know, maybe it's comp that, that I'm capable that I've, I've still got it. Like, I don't know, like, what has this showed you, taught you, reminded you about yourself? No, oh, I've, I've never had a problem with confidence. As you can see, I'm, I'm outgoing. I can talk to any, I can walk into a room and talk to anybody. I don't care. Like I said, I don't, I never cared what people think, but the humility is definitely, I was always i uh, I'm a tough guy. Nobody can get to me. And I really do think when my father passed that it crushed, it kind of crushed my soul a little bit. Like, you don't, everybody says, Oh, well, I mean, people, people die. Yeah. But you don't know until it happens. Mm. And he was like my best friend. And, he was also the, I can do this. I don't need your help. Now, you know, I'm a military man. I don't need your, my dad was never into drugs and alcohol. It was my, the other side of the family, but just military man, you know, I'm, I can do this. And he couldn't, and he did need help. He didn't ask for it. And he had a really, really rough life and he brought it into my life. And humility's the number of that, the limiting beliefs. Like I, I've always just, I'd rather be scared and, work on fear and that is starting obviously i'm still fearful of things i'm fearful of being able to pay the bills having to go get another job this is my other job this is the future i had goals i wanted i wanted to be done with my regular job by the end of october it didn't happen i'm not quitting because of it i just have to start a new goal and Obviously, in the beginning, that's where I said, you know, in the beginning, you want to be a millionaire overnight. I had very lofty goals in the beginning because I didn't know. I, I was learning as I was going. It wasn't like a, you can open a book and know this overnight. No, you have to learn as you go with this. It's not like going to school. It's an education. It's a very good. It's probably a more valuable education than going to school because you have to teach yourself. There's people there to help you along your journey, but you're teaching yourself how to do this. It's not a, nobody's going to hold your hand. Nobody's going to slap your wrist. If you do something wrong, you're going to do something wrong and you're going to sit there and wallow in it by yourself. or You're going to move forward and make an example of it and, and make your future what you want it to be. So, I mean, if you go into it, my one nugget of wisdom for you, if you're going into this, with negative thoughts, throw them out of your mind. Don't, don't have negative thoughts. Just that's another thing. I, I've been a very negative person a lot of my life and it's probably because of my childhood trauma and all the crap I've gone through, but I don't want my kids, like I've said, to be negative people. I, my wife, I don't want her to turn into a negative person. And this has flipped my entire thinking on life. And look, I, I might not be rich from this yet, but it has, it's done things for me that are better than being rich with money. It's changed my relationships. I've cut people out of my life that I never thought I would, but I did it because I saw that they were helping to limit my belief system. And I said, I don't want any part of you anymore. And I mean, like I said, people can call me an asshole, say I'm a horrible person for doing it, but I'm doing things for me. The only people I have to answer to are my two sons, my wife, and God, if he's going to judge me for whatever. That's it. Say it again louder for the people in the back, my brother. That was – this is one for the record books. Great conversation, my man. Looking forward to having you back on the show. Uh, keep it real. Keep going. You're doing great. Adjust your goals. Uh, you've got a long career ahead of you. Um, you are the freckle on the pimple of a gnat's ass right now in terms of the, <laughs> you know, your, the timeline of your career. So uh, keep setting those big lofty goals and striving for them. And pretty soon uh, you'll, you'll, you'll need to think even bigger because you'll have achieved everything that you, that you wanted to. And if you were to set goals right now for a couple of years out, you'll realize when you get there, cause it's hard to undershoot your short term or it's easy to undershoot your short term goals, not make it, but your, your long term goals or 
let me say it more simpler. It's, it's easy to make big goals at the beginning because you're all excited. Right. And, and, and then not reach them. Cause you, just like you, you don't realize the challenges of getting started and getting that initial momentum. But if we were to set long-term goals, 99.999% of us will have shortchanged ourselves. If you were yeah. to try to set a goal for like a few years down the road, you'll get there and you'll look back and say, man, I was thinking small. Michael Jordan said it best. He said, you know, you're going to miss more shots than you're going to make. It's like I missed a lot of shots in my life, but the ones you make are the ones you have to make count. Yes. So don't worry about the ones you missed. Just That's bank it. on the ones you're going to make. That's it, brother. Well said. Well, hey, man, stay legendary, my brother. OK, uh, come sure. back and see me in a couple of months. Let's keep in touch and uh, c continue to you know, show the community here your journey because it's it's an inspirational one. Hope to be at one of those masterminds shaking your hand soon. All right, buddy. Same. Back at you. I'll talk to you later, okay? Yes, sir. Have a good one. Right. Thank you. you buddy. All right. Bye. All right, my friends. Let me uh, – I, I kicked myself out and left you here. All right, Dennis. See you, buddy. See you. All right, my friends. Wow. I'm fired up. I'm ready to run through a damn wall after that one. Um, some real, Some real guy talk there, but hopefully all the ladies enjoyed it as well. We try to make, you know, when we have ladies on it applicable to the men and hopefully. But I think some things were said this morning that a lot of fellas need to hear. And I hope that those of you who were on uh, got something out of this because that was some that was some real talk from some from some real horses mouths, uh, really speaking from experience, not speaking any theory there, my friends. Um Gianna says some older women too. We love the older women. It's all good from young to old and all the way in between all around the world. Amazing. Diana says, thank you so much. Tess sending this to the husband. Wow. Awesome. Um, Dawn says iron sharpens iron. Misty says it was a great show. Thank you. The real McCoy. Okay. Holler. Uh, first ever wake up legendary. Welcome to the community kim it was awesome so real love it thank you all for these wonderful uh comments as always we really appreciate them speaking for dennis as well very much appreciated just the the, the feedback you know the validation sometimes we don't have that validation in our life from other people um and, and especially starting something like this you can have a lot of criticism right you can have a lot of criticism from people which can make it that much tougher so when we come on and share our hearts and open up our hearts to to you know four five hundred there was hovering between five and six hundred people on this all all episode uh and then you give us such positive validating feedback it feels good it, it, it reminds us that we're on the right track and uh it makes it all worth it. It makes getting vulnerable and sharing our hearts worth it. And then that reinforces us doing that more, right? That reinforces us doing that more instead of shutting down and, and going back into our cave and saying, Ooh, I did, you know, I just shared my heart and, and nobody said anything. So I'm going to go back, you know, so you guys give us that validation and it reminds us, Hey, this is, we're on the right track here. You get us. You, you get it. You can relate to this. And that's helpful. That's what this community, the power of this community really is, is that it's a big, bad, scary world out there, right? There's a lot of people with a lot of negative comments, but your support group, your support community around you who says, I get it. I got you. I can relate. That's helpful. And so thank you so much. I love the fact that we can get comments and read these comments and see them. And other people who are on the show can also see your comments. So it's not just me talking and Dennis or whoever's on the show that we can all share our thoughts with each other to remind each other, you're not crazy. You're not crazy over there. You crazy son of a bitch. I get you. Right. That's helpful. We need that. OK, so. All right. We will see you later. We will see you tomorrow for another episode. As always, my friends, make sure you're on the text message list so you don't miss an episode. Either text WUL to 8132. This is my radio. Text WUL to 813-296-8553. That's WUL to 813-296-8553. All right, my friends, get out of here. 
Have a legendary day. Stay legendary yourself. Thanks, Dennis, again. Amazing episode. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for another one. Get out of here. Peace.